So as I was helping her to clean her house and to help her with the donations and combing through some of his things, then it got really late and the donation places were closed. So I ended up having to spend the night there because my car was a little bit bigger and it could fit the boxes and hers was too small to fit all the boxes. So I said I volunteered to donate that the next day for her when they open. So I ended up spending the night there and then when the next day came, I realized I had to go get my tire changed because the car, I for some reason noticed they were starting to peel and crack along the entire circumference and it was a really old tire. So I noticed that like a week ago, but I had finally made the appointment. So um, that next day was when I had that they had the tire in. So she ended up taking me because they opened earlier to the tire place and because she had a car, I didn't have to wait there. And we just left the car and, um, and she had to go to this Tao class. Um, and the Tao class just started. So after I got my breakfast, we ended up going to Tao class together. And the Spirit, the Holy Spirit has led me to the Tao class. I mean, this was all, I didn't perceive that I was going to go to the Tao class. I didn't know she was going to go to the Tao class. I didn't know she was going to donate stuff of my grandfather. None of this. It just, because I locked my car, my keys in my car, then I had to get in touch with her. And then she told me, well, she's doing this and she's doing that. So I ended up having to go with her. I didn't have to go, but I ended up going with her to the Tao class. And the Holy Spirit had told me that with Jesus Christ, with the Son of God, that we don't um, we don't worship idols. And they had these statues of the Buddha, of Guan Yin. She looked like Guan Yin and another um, God that they pray to. And every time we go to these Tao classes, they give us a lecture about, you know, how to be good and on examples of, of good deeds. And then we have lunch. But prior to having lunch, we always had to prostrate, prostrate, and, um, and uh, bow our heads down several, several times to these uh, statues the Buddhist statues. And Critter had told me not to do that. And so I was kind of out of dilemma. And actually, I told my mom that I'm going to go there tomorrow because she happened to, to go to the class. And I'm going to tell them that I'm to take me out of their membership because I have given my heart to Christ, Jesus Christ. And I said, I don't do idol worshiping anymore. But um, so when I went there and she was in just, she was really angry. You know, she thinks that I'm going down a wrong road and she's really worried and you know, how moms get. So she, she started to, you know, getting into her, her kind of um, energy. And I told her, you know, just do wait and see. And, you know, it won't be as bad as she thinks it's going to be, you know. But that was what I've decided. So I ended up, um, after lunch, asking if I could talk to the host. And when I started talking, I actually started asking him questions about this these gods that I'm worshiping because in the past I was led into this uh, by my mother and I didn't even know 
what kind of religion i know it's Tao, and i know they're good and i know that they they want to um bring people to enlightenment and i know that um they talk about buddha and that sort of thing you know just general good charity work and but um I never really knew the gods that they prayed to. So I decided I was going to ask some questions. And what I found out was the following. And this is said in his own words. And I was actually very surprised when he said this. Because my mom thinks I'm going crazy with all my um, talking to God. And she thinks like um, this is not possible. And she thinks that I must be under a sh you know something else so and i said well um anyway so okay so back to this so i started asking him questions and he i asked him who are we praying to and he said we're praying to sijamoni which is buddha and he has um reached in enlightenment because he used to have, he used to be the son of a very wealthy, like um, the king, he, he, they owned these the kind of like an emperor type of um, son where he was protected and he grew up really wealthy and he had anything, he could have anything he wanted. He had many, many, um, all the jewels, he, they owned the, the land, the land and people, he, they ruled the land, and he was protected. He lived in this kind of a kingdom, like a fortress that they had. And inside the fortress, there's merchants and people, and, and they all well-dressed and rich, and they had parties. And, and he was kept from seeing the poverty of the world. But one time, he had gone outside of this, this kingdom, and he realized that outside of this kingdom, people were poor and hungry and dying and old and ugly and sick. And that was something he'd never seen before. It's, I think it's Siddhartha. I'm not sure if I'm, if I'm saying this right but in English, but I think he's... I don't know if he's a Siddhartha, because I know I read his, but it sounded like a different story. But anyway... So when he realized that, um, he realized that life wasn't what he thought it was. It wasn't happy. He was kept from the truth. And the truth was that there was suffering. That he realized that all men were tied in suffering. And he pursued the way out of suffering and he went and learned under a master that he had found outside of his palace and <clears throat> and he started to learn with this master and he reached enlightenment and he no longer has to return to the earth and his um predecessor what he the guy the the Fat Buddha, the, the happy fat Buddha with a big belly, was the guy that he had um, given the authority to um, take over his his position when he left the earth, because this fat Buddha is also a human being. But he never did reach enlightenment, and he was in between heaven and earth. He was in this certain, I'm not sure if it's a certain level of heaven that he was in, but he's in another section where he was waiting to reincarnate onto earth again for his final enlightenment, his final life of enlightenment, that he will, he will obtain enlightenment in his final life. And that hasn't happened yet. But that was actually the Buddha that the fat, big-bellied Buddha was what they were praying to. Um, so he wasn't actually enlightened yet, but he will be. And um, so that, I actually didn't know that. 
and um, so I asked about Guan Yin, the kind, the woman that was always in this beautiful floaty dress, and she was the one that was known as the goddess of compassion. So I asked them, well, was Guan Yin ever a human being? And just they said, no, Guan Yin never reincarnated, never incarnated, never, never was a human being, never came on earth as a human being. And I said, well, what is she? Oh, you know, and he, out of his mouth, said that these gods were really actually just AKA aliens. He said that, my mom heard it, I don't know if she recognized that she heard it because we pick out things that we want to hear. But he says, these gods that never were humans before are known as aliens. And that actually makes sense 